Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David and this is a Magic Review. Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Thanks for tuning in to another magic review because that is what we do here at Magic Orthodoxy. We do magic reviews, playing card reviews, and we also do giveaways every single month. So before you forget, make sure you hit like and subscribe, hit your notification bell so that you're alerted when your favorite review or a new giveaway goes live. Today, we're gonna look at the stack watch from Peter Turner, G. Clark, and illusionist.com. But before we get into it, before we get into the review, let me just tell you one more thing. You can also join this channel. You can join this channel, and if you join the channel, you will have access to even more videos than the ones that are made public. Every single week, I put two extra videos out. So it could be a review, it could be a comparison, like a side-by-side, -side, it could be a versus. We could be talking about everyday carry, magic theory, there's so many videos over there right now. I think there's over 20 videos there now, and there's two videos added every single week. You can click the join button down there below. That'll take you to a pop-up, and then for $1.99 a month, you'll have access to every video that's already been made and every video going forward. Plus, today, we're gonna upload a new video where we compare the stack watch against Timeless from Liam Montier and Vanishing Inc. All right, the stack watch, what is it? I'm wearing it on my wrist right now. I've been wearing it through the, this entire time and I'll be wearing it through the rest of this video. So it'll always be in your sight. And I'll be very open about putting up pictures and showing you exactly what you're getting uh, for your money and what you get if you purchase this from illusionist.com. But at its core, what this is, is a crib. What is a crib? A crib is a way for the magician to remember something. So if you're doing a book test, sometimes we have cribs that help us remember what the words are. Um, sometimes there's cribs that help us remember large amounts of numbers. Like if you're gonna do like the magic square, I know there's cribs to help you with the math or help you to remember what numbers to put where. And cribs have been something that has been a magician's tool since the dawn of time. There are no magicians that are above using a crib. It's a magician's tool, just like any other magician's tool. What Illusionist has done is they figured out a way to turn your watch into a crib that reminds you the mnemonica system. So that raises up another question. What is mnemonica? Mnemonica is a deck stack. Uh, magicians have been using mnemonica forever. Uh, it was developed first by Juan Tamarie. Uh, Juan Tamarie has a book out called Mnemonica, and we'll talk about that as well. And, and there's been a, a lot written, actually, about either mnemonica itself or just the use and power that is available to you as a magician to learn a deck stack. Now, there's other deck stacks out there, of course. Uh, Simon Aronson has one, uh, and, and uh, Woody Aragon has one, right? But those magicians that have learned a deck stack and then learned tricks to do it, I think have kind of gone through another door that many magicians don't ever pass through and have realized just the options and availability to new tricks. And just like I was saying earlier, the power that is in a memorized stack. Where could you learn more about memory and where could you learn more about deck stacks? There's a great book called The Memory Arts by Sarah and David Trussman. It's fully colored pictures. will walk you through how to remember different things. Bound to Please by Simon Aronson is a fantastic volume about deck stacking. Memorandum by Woody Aragon has a chapter in there about the mnemonica. And of course, the Marksman deck from Luke Germay, uh, in that it's a deck and not a book, 
But what Luke did was he put the crib on the deck of cards itself physically so that the reminders would be right there on the backs. And Luke Germain's videos offer some very powerful teaching on Demonica. And if you don't know who Juan Tamari is, where have you been? Juan Tamari is one of the all time greatest sleight of hand artists. And he is such a uh, prolific creator and he is very clever. I mean, easily, those who have seen him live easily would tell you that he is one of the best in the world. His book, Mnemonica, will take you on a tour through the history of stack decks. It gives advice on how to memorize the stack and provides many tricks and ideas. Everything you could possibly need is in this book. If the book mentions the pass or the coal or a glimpse, there's even an appendix at the back where you can learn the moves. Plus, there's over 50 tricks. There's gambling demonstrations, there's mentalism, there's openers, there's closers, there's tricks that'll make uh, magicians run away screaming, uh, and there's even fun stuff in there that you can amaze your friends with. So why have a watch? Why have a stack watch if you could just simply learn everything from a book? Well, for one, not everybody learns from books. It's true, not everybody learns from books. Two, like I said, the watch is a crib. It is a crib. So I can still learn a magic trick, learn how to do it, learn how to perform it, but there might be the occasion where I need the crib to remind me or to help me or to carry me through in a particular moment. Because let's face it, in the heat of the moment, in performance, sometimes we let our nerves get the better of us. Sometimes uh, we just outright forget, right? We just outright forget. You could, somebody just calls out 26 and you're like, ah, 26, what is that? It's the king of diamonds. But you know what I'm saying? Like you'll, that number will just go out there and you, in your mind you're thinking, oh, I don't, mm, right? And you don't want that. You don't want that. You want that safety net. You want that rope that's supporting you. Okay. You want to be able to, e even in the book, even in Demonica, uh, Juan Tamari suggests making a crib. He does. He suggests writing out all of Demonica on the back of a, of a Joker card and to lift it up to your face. He even says in the book, lift it up to your face and look at it and, and call attention to it and say, this Joker is going to make you forget your card, or this Joker is going to make, you know, me find your card, whatever. But really you're looking at your crib. Well, that's all the watch is. The watch is just a modern day version of Juan Tamari's own suggestion. Now, is learning 52 cards in order going to take time and practice? Absolutely. Are, is illusionist suggesting that you don't take the time and practice to learn the Monica? Absolutely not. In fact, I think those of us who have trouble with memory, because that's a real thing, right? Uh, are going to enjoy this even more because it's going to be an aid to help us get there. I know that um, this watch has helped me with that because with every card, you're learning two numbers, not just one, right? You're not just learning five of clubs. You're not just learning the five, right? You also have to learn the position of where the five of clubs is. So you have to remember the number 30 and five of clubs. Because if somebody just calls out 30, your brain has to say five of clubs and vice versa. If someone just calls out five of clubs, you have to say 30 in your brain. So to remember two numbers that don't really have anything to do with each other, and then remember color and suit, right? To have all that retaining your memory, and then to do that 52 times, no, it is not easy, right? It is not easy. But like I was saying earlier, a magician who has learned a stack, committed it to memory, is dangerous. You are lethal now, and you've literally walked through a door that many magicians will never ever go through. And once you learn it, you will know it for the rest of your life. All right, so stack watch, let's get into it. Let's review it. Let's talk about it. What are you going to get? It's going to come in this nice gray and black drawer slide box. Inside that, you're going to get the watch and uh, you're going to get the download code so that you can watch the instructional videos out on the internet. The videos are an hour and 40 minutes, an hour of an, and 40 minutes of instruction. You're also going to get this. Well, what is this? This is a resizing tool. Now you're going to need this because I can almost guarantee you that when the watch comes in the mail, it will not fit your wrist, especially if you have smaller wrists like mine. 
especially if you're either younger or you have a shorter frame, it probably won't fit you. I had to remove two links in order for this to fit me. I am about uh, five, six. I weigh about 160 pounds. I had to lose two links in order for this to fit me. And I had to use the resizing tool and it was a process. It was not easy. Um, took me about an hour to do because I was trying to be careful and go slow. I didn't want to hurt anything, wreck anything. Don't try to adjust it um, unless you are uh, got the time. Don't rush it. If you feel extremely hesitant because you spent money on this, you can certainly go to a jeweler, go to a watch place, and they will take the links off for you. Absolutely. Okay. Some grocery stores even have a jeweler inside. So, and, you, and the grocery stores are still open. So if you can find somebody who can adjust it for you, go for it, right? But Illusionist is giving you the tool, which is great because for many of us, there, there isn't anybody to go to. And so I'm just letting you know, I had to take two links off for it to fit me. So when it comes in the mail, chances are it might not fit you right out of the box. All right. So is it what I thought? Absolutely. If you watch the live event, and I would encourage you to do that. If you have not watched the live event between G. Clark and Peter Turner, watch that first. Watch that first before you spend your money so that you can see exactly what it is that you're getting and if this is going to work for you. When you buy Magic Tricks, when you spend your money, you need to make sure that you're buying something that you're actually going to use. And this is for deck stacking work. That means you are going to start doing deck work, magic work with the cards in Mnemonica. You are going to learn, eventually you will, you will learn Mnemonica. Uh, this watch is a crib and the crib will serve as a daily reminder, right? Every time you use it uh, of where things are. And I, I guarantee you that if you start to see reactions from this and you start to see how, how far this goes and, and how amazed your spectators look, like you can't do a more cleaner version of any card at any number than you can with Mnemonica, in my opinion, in my opinion. I think if you can do any card at any number, it becomes an outright miracle with the Mnemonica system. And once you start seeing those reactions that you're getting from people, once you start seeing the power that is in that system, it is only going to encourage you more to learn it for yourself. And you will, you will learn it for yourself. So when you start, you know, you, somebody just calls out 46, you're going to know queen of diamonds immediately, just like that. Or if someone says queen of diamonds, you're going to know that's a position 46. You'll know it. And the more that happens, like I said, new door opened for you. All right, so how are the angles? The watch is not just a crib, it is also a peak device. Now, what is a peak device? A peak device is something that uh, is used in mentalism a lot. Um, magicians are always looking for the perfect peak wallet, right? And getting a peak from a billet is something that is widely discussed in mentalism. And again, I don't think there's any magicians that are above using a peak. So the watch is a peak device, it is also a crib, and it's it's those two things working together. Peter Turner is going to spend a lot of time talking to you about the rationalization and motivation for looking at your watch. Obviously, somebody's not going to just shout out, you know, 42, and then you're sitting there looking at your watch going, okay, it's the four of diamonds. That would be useless, right? That is not the purpose of the watch. <laughs> That's not what's going to happen. Okay. You're going to find a reason and you're going to have motivation to look at the watch, you know, and Peter's going to teach you that. And along with that, because it is a crib and because it is a peak device, it's not going to be something that you overuse. You know, if you have a peak wallet and you love it, how many times do you use the peak wallet in one routine? Probably once, right? Just once. And I would argue the same thing. You're probably going to use this just one time. Okay, but you're gonna save it for that one time where it's gonna kill. Just like I wouldn't use a Svengali deck twice in the same presentation. I wouldn't use a thumb tip twice in the same presentation. Both of those are also tools, right? They're tools. And we as magicians are not above thumb tips or Svengali decks or stripper decks or any of the other things that make our lives easier, okay? Again, this is a crib. This is a peak device that is gonna help you with doing tricks that use Juan Tamarie's mnemonica stack.
Can it be inspected? All right, let's talk about the watch for a little bit. Um, I can say it, it can have a casual inspection. It is a real watch, all right? It is a real watch. It really will hold time. For those of you who say, well, if I'm gonna buy a watch, it better tell time, right? It better be a real watch because I'm gonna be looking at it. It's on my wrist, I'm gonna be looking at it. Definitely, use it as your real watch. It's nice, it's stylish. It's certainly a, a specific style and a specific uh, person is gonna look right with a watch of that size on you but um, I think it will pass a casual inspection. I think if somebody looks at it too closely, they are gonna see all the card uh, indicators, all the pips and indices that are around it. And um, I wouldn't want them to ask you what it was. And if they do ask you what it was, I would have a response ready to go. And if they did catch it, I probably wouldn't use it on them because I think they would be alerted to it. Plus I would say if you're a hobby magician, like I am, I'm a hobbyist, uh, make it your new watch. Make it your new watch and wear it all the time so that people don't notice that you only wear it when you do magic, right? That looks weird. Like, oh, but I have, you know, I wear my Apple watch all the time. But then when I do magic, I wear this. Well, people that know you are gonna notice little things like that, right? And they're gonna say, oh, did you get a new watch? You don't want that, right? So as a hobbyist, I would say wear it daily so that it just becomes invisible to people that know you. All right, so what's the overall quality and production value of the one hour and 40 minute instruction? Uh, you got Peter, he is seated in his living room. It's a stationary shot pretty much through the entire thing. The camera never moves, never gives you close-ups. There's no over the shoulder shots. He is talking to the camera. There's no music and he is well mic'd. Oftentimes in the video, he will mention the Burglass effect. Now, what is he talking about? Who? is David Burglass. Back in the 1950s, David Burglass created an effect which many magicians now call the Holy Grail. They also call it the Burglass effect, which is basically any card to any number, right? It's having someone freely name any playing card and a freely selected place in the deck and the specified card is found at the specified spot. The effect was first named the Burglass effect by John Rackenbomber in his 1984 book, At the Table. So when you hear Turner say a Burglass effect, he is talking about any card at any number, but the purest, right? The purest form of any card at any number. As far as what he's gonna teach you on the video, you'll get an intro to the intro because obviously we are in COVID season right now. And so he can't go out and film live footage. So a lot of that footage, the live interaction, will have to wait for a later date. And he made the illusion that possibly illusionists would actually film and edit a different set of instructions for later. Then you'll get the standard introduction. You'll get another video about how to adjust your band. He'll talk about what a stack is and then how to make the stack live in front of your spectator. He'll talk about how to false shuffle the cards. And I would say that's important too. If you're gonna to learn mnemonica, you also need to learn how to do a false shuffle. It would look a little shady if you just brought the deck out and immediately started doing tricks with it without first showing how fair this is, okay? Decks come standard now sometimes in mnemonica. Like if you buy custom cards from a magician, oftentimes they'll put it in mnemonica stack, which is great, but you still need to learn how to do a false shuffle at the very beginning to give your spectator that assurance that this is now a shuffled deck, okay? So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, you're gonna learn mnemonica, you also need to learn some good and convincing false shuffles. Next, he'll teach you how to move the deck or move the bezel to match. And then he'll go through a first basic trick where a spectator cuts off an amount of cards and you're able to tell them how many cards they've cut and the card at the face that they have cut to. And then the rest of the tricks are really gonna be about any card to any number. There's two tricks that cover the Burglass effect, and then he's gonna talk about the trick that he did in the live with G. Clark. He'll then talk about how to force different numbers and how to force uh, face cards. So he'll have a, a whole video about psychological forces. And then you'll also be able to see and download the entire interview that Peter did with G. Clark. Is it well made? It is a nice watch. It is a nice watch, it looks nice. Um, when my wife saw it first, she said, oh wow, that's a nice watch. And she, and she fully knew what it was, right? And uh, so yeah, it's, it's gonna look nice. I think it feels nice. It has good weight to it. It's, it's a beautiful timepiece. How much practice does this require? That is unknown. It's completely unknown because it's gonna be up to you. 
some of us already know mnemonic. I already know it. So, you know, then it, then it becomes a true crib, right? Then it becomes a true crib. It becomes a true safety net. Others of us are just learning mnemonic or learning it for the very first time. So your practice with it will vary from person to person. How much setup and reset is there? Uh, like I said, I had to take two links out when it came to me in the mail. You will more than likely have to make adjustments to it as well. Please be patient. Please take your time with it. You spent good money on this. So either you do it well or ask a parent or an adult to help you or take it to a jeweler who can do it for you. Positives. All right, so what are the positives to the stack watch? This is a practical and very real world tool that will stylishly enhance your journey to learning mnemonica. Negatives. All right, so what are the negatives? You know, we always offer up the things we like and the things we don't like as much. I want to give you all the information so that you know exactly what to expect, what you are spending your money on. Now, Peter Turner had a disclaimer before his intro. I'm going to do the same. I realize that we are in COVID country right now and that we can't all get out there and, and do the things that we need to do. And, and that includes making magic instructional videos. But that said, I think the thing that was missing the most from the instructional video was a video that showed the watch. <laughs> You watch those videos all the way through and all we see is Peter Turner. I mean, he's a great looking guy. He's fun to watch, right? But, and his voice is so soothing, but <laughs> I would have appreciated a video where they actually showed me the watch face, showed me the numbers and showed me how to read it because it was kind of implied that the spectator is going to call out any number, right? That's what, that's what you want first. You want the number first so that you can go down the watch face and find the card. Because if the spectator calls the card first and you don't know mnemonica, then your eye is going to scan through 52 letters and numbers to try to find it. Well, you don't want to do that. If you don't know mnemonica, then you have to go through every single number to find it. That's going to take a long time. It's 52, right? 52 things that your eye has to scan through. What if the card you're looking for is at the end? You don't want to do that. So I would have appreciated something from Illusionist that showed the, the watch face, showed the bezel turning, and then had somebody's finger pointing to what they're supposed to do. Because when I first got the watch, I was kind of surprised that there are no numbers on it. You know, like I, I thought this was supposed to be uh, help me learn where cards were at that number. So then I would expect that there be a number there so that when I see the card underneath it, then I would see the number underneath that and I would go, oh, you're at that number, but there's no numbers at all on the face. So I've been counting by fives, right? Five, 10, 50, 20. And, and, and for that reason, but that was just my own, that was just my own doing. So if, you know, G Clark or Peter Turner has some tips on how to read the watch face and how to find things faster and how to use the watch face and to use the bezel, I think that especially beginners to mnemonica would appreciate a video that actually showed the watch close up or had more jump cuts, more edits to, you know, seeing from the magician's view what the magician is looking at and maybe some arrows or some graphics about this is where you're going to look on the watch. I think that would have helped a lot. All right. So is it worth your money? Uh, I think when I bought this, it was 52 bucks. So it was around $50. I don't know if they'll change the price point now that the early purchase has passed. Um, so we'll see, but it was about 50 bucks when I bought it, but really, I mean, value is only determined by usage. If you use it and you get something from it, if it's good for you and your style, then it has value, right? Then it has value. If, if you, if you always wear suits and you have a very formal look, a watch of this style might not be the kind of watch that goes with your character. You might be thinking, oh, wow, that's a great watch. I hope they make one in a dress watch because I wear a suit. I wear a suit and tie, okay? I, I could see that. And so this is why we have reviews like this so that you get all the information. But again, it's only worth your money if you like it and use it, right? And I think this is a very specific thing, okay? This is a very specific tool. It's for people who are going to do card tricks with Mnemonica. And, and eventually you're, you're saying, you're committing, you're saying, I'm going to learn this stack. 
right? Because eventually that's what will happen. You will start to learn the stack. But don't just take my word for it. There are other review channels out there that I'm sure will start reviewing this. Um, as of right now, the only other channel that has reviewed this is The Magic Minute. Now, I'll just say right away, The Magic Minute's video, he doesn't own the watch, but he still gives his opinion on it. And I think it's still a good opinion and you should go and watch it. I think people can have an opinion about something even if they don't own it or they haven't watched it or haven't seen it. We can have an opinion about anything. And that's the good thing about the internet and sharing information. And I think we definitely should keep doing that, keep those communication lines open and be as open and forthcoming as we possibly can. That's why I do this because I want you to spend your money wisely. No more magic in drawers, right? No more magic in drawers. All right, that's everything I can say about the stack watch from Peter Turner, G. Clark, illusionist.com. I got mine from illusionist.com. And if you'd like to purchase one for yourself, I would suggest you head there as well. Thanks everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.